El Furqan, the standard of truth and falsehood, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Blessed is he who revealed El Furqan to his servant that he may be a warner to all the peoples. It is he to whom the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth belongs, and he has begotten nor taken to himself a son, nor is there any associate with him in the sovereignty. He has created everything and has determined its proper measure. Yet people worship apart from him gods who, rather than create anything, are themselves created, and who have no power of averting harm or doing good to themselves nor have they any control over death or life or resurrection. But those who believe say, This Qur'an is nothing but a big lie, which he, the false claimant to prophethood, has forged, and other people have helped him in this. By so saying, they have perpetrated a great injustice and a big falsehood. They also say, this Qur'an consists of fables of the ancients that he has got written down, and now they are read out to him morning and evening. Say, he who knows every secret of the heavens and the earth has revealed this Qur'an. Verily, he is great protector, ever merciful. They say, what sort of a messenger is this, that he even eats food? and also goes about in the marketplaces. Why has no angel been sent down to him that he may help him and be a warner along with him? Or a treasure should have been sent to him, or there should have been a garden from which he might eat. Not only that, these unjust people say, you follow none but a mere man who is given food. Look what fantastic stories they concoct with regard to you. It is therefore that they have gone astray and are unable to find a way. Blessed is he who is pleased to assign to you, better than that, gardens served with running streams, and will also assign to you palaces. Nay, the real fact is, they, the disbelievers, cry lies to the hour of the evil doom of the disbelievers and final victory of the Muslims, and we have in store a blazing hell for him who cries lies to the hour. When it, the blazing fire, sees them from afar, they will hear its raging and roaring. And when they are thrown into some narrow place of it, chained in fetters, they will call out for total destruction there and then. It will be said to them, This is no time to call out for a single death. You had better call out for a series of deaths. Say, Is this end better, or the everlasting paradise which is promised to those who guard against evil, and which is their due reward and ultimate resort? They shall have there all that they desire, and they will abide in this state of bliss forever. It is a promise binding on your Lord, and to be always earnestly prayed for from him. Beware of the day when he will gather them together, and the things they worship, apart from Allah. He will ask, Was it you who led these servants of mine astray, or did they themselves stray away from the right path? They will say, Holy is your name. It did not behoove us to take patrons apart from you, but you bestowed on them and their fathers the good things of life to such an extent that they gave up remembrance of you and became a ruined people. Then we shall say to the idol worshippers, Now these deities have given you the lie and contradict you with regard to what you said, so today you have no power to avert the penalty or get help of any sort for yourselves. Remember, whosoever of you acts unjustly and goes wrong, we shall make him suffer a great punishment. And we sent no messengers before you, but they surely ate food and walked in the marketplaces, and were human models for you to follow in every walk of life. And we try you one with another 
to show if you will then patiently persevere, and your Lord is ever all-seeing. Those who entertain no fear about being present before us, nor do they expect it, say, Why should not the angels be sent down to us? For we see our Lord. They have indeed thought very highly of themselves, and have exceeded all limits of transgression. Do they not realize that the day when they will see the angels, there will be no good tidings that day for those who cut off their ties with God? And they will say in distress, Would that there were some strong barrier between us and this punishment. And we have turned our attention to whatever attempt they have made against Islam. And so we will render this attempt like thin dust particles, scattered about as it was in the Battle of Badr. Only the owners of paradise will be better off with regard to their abode, and happier still in respect of their place of repose. Call to mind the day when the heaven shall burst and melt into raining clouds, and the angels shall be made to descend in large numbers. The true sovereignty that day shall belong only to the most gracious God, and it shall be really a very hard day for the disbelievers. On that day, the unjust shall bite his hands in regret. He will say, If only I had followed the same path along with the messenger. Ah, woe is me! Would that I had not made friends with so-and-so. He indeed led me astray from this source of rising to eminence after it had come to me, and Satan is ever a deserter of human being in the hour of need. And on that day the messenger will say, My lord, my people treated even this Qur'an as a thing abandoned. Just as we have turned them into your enemies, so do we make those who cut off their ties with Allah as the enemies of each and every prophet. Yet your Lord is sufficient to guide, and enough in respect of rendering help. And those who disbelieve say, Why has not the whole of the Qur'an been revealed to him all at once? But we have revealed it in this manner, piece by piece out of necessity. And in spite of the fact that it has not been revealed all at once, we have arranged it in an excellent form and order of arrangement, and free of all contradictions, so that we may thereby lend strength to your heart. And they bring you no parable by way of an objection, but we have provided you with the true fact and perfect interpretation of it, in answer to the objection beforehand. And those who shall be brought to Jehenna, dragged on their faces, and along with their leaders, are the worst placed, and they have completely lost the straight path. And we gave Moses the scripture, and made with him his brother Aaron a sharer of his burden. We said, Go both of you to the people who have cried lies to our commandments. Then. When they had accomplished their mission of conveying the message, and were again rejected, we destroyed these disbelievers with an utter destruction. And we destroyed the people of Noah, too, when they treated our messengers as liars. We drowned them, and made them a sign for people. Indeed, we have in store a woeful punishment for such of the wrongdoers. And tribes of Ad and Thamud, and the people of the Ras, and many a generation in between them, were all destroyed. And for the guidance of each one of them, we quoted excellent pieces of advice, and when they still persisted in refusal, we ruined each one of them, a complete ruination. And certainly, these Meccan disbelievers pass by the ruined townships which suffered a painful rain of stone. Have they not been seeing the ruins of this? Of course they have. They do not, and expect not, to be resurrected after death, and to be called to account for their deeds. And whenever they see you, they treat you disdainfully, saying, What? Is this the man whom Allah has raised for a messenger? 
he indeed had well nigh led us astray from our gods if we had not adhered to them steadfastly and they shall soon know for certain when they see the punishment who had completely lost the straight path have you considered over the plight of one who has taken his own low desires for his deity can you then be a guardian over such a one do you think that most of these opponents can hear and understand what you say they are only like cattle rather they are even worse in their ways and behavior do you not see the wonderful doing of your lord how he stretches the shadow if he had pleased he could have made it still not only that we stretch the shadow we make the position of the sun its indicator then as the sun rises higher in the sky we withdraw it to ourselves a gradual withdrawing it is he who has made the night as a covering mantle for you and who has made sleep for a short rest as a sign of eternal rest and has made the day for rising up and going about to seek livelihood and also a sign of resurrection and it is he who sends the winds as happy heralds of his mercy and we send down from above water for the purification that we may thereby bring the dead land to life and give it as a drink to most of the things whom we have created beast and people in large numbers and we have explained this topic to them in diverse ways so that they may take heed but most of the people would refuse to adopt any attitude except that of disbelief if we had so willed we would surely have raised in place of universal prophethood a warner in every town so do not follow the disbelievers and strive hard against them with the help of this quran a mighty striving it is he who has let the two spans of water loose to flow one of them a river sweet and thirst quenching while the other a sea saltish and bitter and he has set a barrier and an insurmountable partition between them still both exist side by side in the world and would continue and it is he who created human being from water and has given him relations by descent and kinship by marriage and thus sought to establish a civilization and social life based on oneness of humanity under oneness of god and your lord is all-powerful yet they the disbelievers worship apart from allah the things which can neither do them good nor avert harm from them and the disbeliever is ever a helper of the upholders of the cause of untruth against his lord but we have sent you only as a bearer of happy tidings to the doers of good and as a warner to the wicked and the unjust say i ask of you no recompense for it all that i ask is that whoever chooses may follow the path that leads to his lord hence put your trust in the ever-living god who is free from death and glorify his holiness along with celebrating his praise and also tell sufficient is he as being well aware of the shortcomings of his servants it is he who created the heavens and the earth and all that lies between them in six aeons besides he is firmly established on the throne of power he is the most gracious god and ask concerning him who knows and when it is said to them prostrate to show submission to the most gracious god they say what thing is this the most gracious god shall we prostrate to whatever you bid us to show submission so this bidding of the prophet to submit to the lord increased in them aversion to the truth blessed is he who has placed stars in the heaven and has set in it the glowing sun that produces light and the glittering moon that reflects light and it is he who has made the night and the day one following the other he has done it for the benefit of the person who would care to receive exhortation and who would care to be grateful 
those alone are the true servants of the most gracious God, who walk upon the earth in all humility, but in a dignified manner. And when the ignorant address them, they do not wrangle, but observe a peaceful attitude. And who pass the nights for the sake of their Lord, prostrating and standing up before him in prayer. And who say while praying, Our Lord, avert from us the punishment of Jehenna, for its punishment is indeed most vehement and unshakable. It is, of course, an evil place to lodge temporarily, and an evil place to remain therein permanently. And the true servants of God are those who, when spending, are neither extravagant nor niggardly, but their spending follow a middle course, ever moderate, and who invoke none as God along with Allah, and who do not kill any one whom Allah has forbidden to be killed, except for a just and lawful cause, and who do not commit fornication and adultery, and he who does these things shall meet the punishment of his sin. His punishment shall be doubled on the day of resurrection. Humiliated and disgraced, he shall suffer the punishment for long. Different, however, shall be the case of him who turns to God in repentance and believes and does righteous deeds. For such people only, Allah will replace their evil deeds with good ones, and Allah is great protector, ever merciful. And he who turns to God in sincere repentance, and accordingly does righteous deeds, no doubt he turns to Allah in proper and true repentance. And those who do not give false evidence, and when they pass by something vain, they do not indulge in it, but pass on with dignity. And who do not shut their ears and eyes to the commandments of their Lord, but listen to them attentively and with their eyes open, when they are reminded of them, so that their belief is based on convictions and not on mere hearsay. And who in their prayers say, O our Lord, grant that our spouses and our children be a source of comfort for our eyes, and make us a model for those who guard against evil. It is such of those who will be rewarded the highest place in paradise for their fortitude, and they will be received therein with greeting of salutation of peace. They will abide therein for ever. How excellent it is as a lodging place to rest, and how noble as an abode for permanent stay. Say to the disbelievers, My Lord will not hold you to be of any worth if you do not call on him in your prayer seeking his protection. Since you cried lies to the word of God, so you must now encounter a lasting punishment.